Let's start with the questions that people around the world have been waiting for you to answer. Yes or no? Did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. Yes or no? Was one of those banned substances EPO? Yes. Did you ever blood dope or use blood transfusions to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. Did you ever use any other banned substances like testosterone, uh, cortisone, or human growth hormone? Yes. Yes or no? In all seven of your Tour de France victories, did you ever take banned substances or blood dope? Yes. In your opinion, was it humanly possible to win the Tour de France without doping? Seven times in a row. Not in my opinion. The cynics and the skeptics, I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry you can't dream big, and I'm sorry you don't believe in miracles. But this is one hell of a race. This is a great sporting event, and you should stand around and believe. There are no secrets. This is a hard sporting event, and hard work wins it. What, what was the culture? Can you explain the culture to us? <laughs> it's, it's hard to get into that mm -hmm. without, and, I, and again, I don't want to, um, I don't want to accuse anybody else. I don't want to necessarily talk about anybody else. I, I made my decisions. They are my mistake. And I am sitting here today to acknowledge that and to say I'm sorry for that. I was on my deathbed. Do you think I'm going to come back into a sport and say, okay, okay, doctor, give me everything you got. I just want to go fast. No way. Would never do that. The Tour de France is widely considered one of the most grueling and difficult athletic events on planet Earth. For 21 stages, spanning 23 days, cyclists push their bodies to the max. The modern editions of the Tour de France cover approximately 3,500 kilometers or 2,200 miles total. The race alternates between clockwise and counterclockwise circuits. 20 to 22 teams of eight riders usually compete. Tour de France is gruesome equals 333 in reverse ordinal. Those who understand the reality of how hard it is to finish this race, let alone compete to actually win, realize competitors have to go to the fringes of fair play to maximize performance. Lance Armstrong may have been the most famous cheater in Tour de France history due to his success, but he wasn't the first and will not be the last. Dating back to its inception, the Tour de France has always carried a culture of cheating to try to win the event by any means necessary. Tour de France can be a dangerous event. Tour de France is a very hard event. Everyone cheats in tour cycling, all equal 137 in the English reduction cipher, which is the 33rd prime. Cheating started with the inaugural Tour de France in 1903. In the first contest, rivals Maurice Garin and Fernand Agarou nearly came to blows after Garin told his friends to knock Agarou off his bike twice. When Agarou recovered, Garin leapt from his bicycle, stomped on Agarou's bike himself until the wheels were mangled and inoperative. Physical attacks were just the beginning when it came to cheating in the early days. The long night rides during the race practically encouraged cheating since race officials couldn't monitor the riders. In the second race in 1904, riders reportedly tossed tacks and nails onto the road to puncture tires. Some riders hopped onto trains to get a head start during the race. The prize motivated the cheating. The overall winner took home 3,000 francs, the equivalent of two years wages for a manual laborer. While professionals were the favorites, the field was filled with amateur cyclists looking for a big payday, and they were more than willing to cut corners to try to get that windfall. By the Gold Standard Act, in 1900, a dollar was defined as 1.5 grams of gold. By the Latin Monetary Union Standard, a franc was defined as 0.29 grams of gold. So each dollar was worth 5.18 francs. In 1903, 3,000 francs divided by 5.18 equals $579, which has the equivalent purchasing power of about 20,000 today. In 1904's race, 
with a reward of 5,000 francs. 5,000 francs divided by 5.18 equals $965, which is equivalent in purchasing power of about 33,000 today. The second Tour de France might be the dirtiest in history. In the first stage, four men in a car jumped out to attack the previous year's winner, Maurice Garin. During the second stage, fans of cyclist Antoine Ferrer tossed glass on the road, causing flat tires throughout the pack. And fans lined up to throw rocks at cyclists during multiple stages. But the worst offense has to be the brawl in St. Etienne. Townspeople created a human blockade to aid hometown favorite Farrer. As Garin and another cyclist approached, the fracas only stopped when journalist and Tour de France architect Gio Lefebvre showed up and fired a pistol. Ultimately, the melee failed to serve its purpose. Garin went on to win his second straight Tour de France. This win was later stripped away amid widespread accusations of misconduct. Nearly a century before Lance Armstrong rose to superstar status in the cycling scene, the winner of the 1903 and 1904 Tour de France races, Maurice Garin, was affectionately known as the Little Chimney Sweep. Garin often rode with a cigarette in his mouth and was known for winning the 1893 precursor to the actual Tour de France. He accredited his 1893 victory to his diet during the race, red wine, oysters, several liters of tapioca and hot chocolate. But it wasn't wine that helped Garin win the first two Tour de France races. It was cheating. Garin knocked riders off their bikes, stomped on their wheels, and even caught a train ride to shorten one stage. The tactics helped Garin cross the finish line before anyone else and bag a fortune of prize money. As historian Peter Cossins once said, Crime paid to a certain extent for Maurice Garin. Even with being stripped of his second tour win, Garin used his fame to buy a gas station, which he ran for the next 40 years. In 2005, at the age of 33, after winning a seventh Tour de France, Armstrong retires to spend more time with his family. French newspaper Le Quip reports blood samples being retested from a 1999 race, which shows evidence of blood doping that year but Armstrong again denies those allegations. Even though they weren't the first, the French made cycling what it is today with their adaptations to the two-wheeled pedal models in the late 1800s. But this alone did not solidify their place as the cycling capital of the world. I do believe in a sport where cheating is rampant and commonplace, the French didn't take too kindly to an American winning their grand event seven times in a row and not doing it clean even if their riders weren't clean themselves. Major cheating in Tour de France, French resented Lance Armstrong, and Tour de France has always had cheaters, all equal 133 in English reduction. Join my Patreon today for only $5 to receive a monthly esoteric documentary on your favorite sports athletes and events. Real, raw, uncut, and uncensored without the limitations of YouTube. Join today to see the other side of the sports world.